and welcome back to Rust and Stardust Productions How to Make and this time we are making our very own flower crown or woodland crown just like this one here. So I am filming this on the 1st of May, May Day or Beltane, whatever you celebrate. It's the sort of peak of spring, start of the summer and it's time to celebrate with flowers and fire and good food and family and laughter and all of those wonderful things. Now some people might not have access to some of these wonderful things during isolation so this is a really nice craft to get you out into your garden or your local woodland or parks as long as you're keeping a good distance from people and doing a bit of foraging. So I have foraged all the materials for this lovely crown some of it's from my garden, some of it's from my local woods that I'm lucky enough to live near and some of it's things that I just had in my collection of craft materials. So I haven't had to buy any of this and most of it's come from my house or garden. So I thought this was a lovely craft to get you out in the fresh air, get you looking for interesting things and you can still celebrate this lovely time of year even whilst in isolation. For this craft you will need something to use as the base of your crown. Now I have just trimmed the tree in my garden and so I took a cutting of one of the branches that was trimmed to use as the base of my crown. If you don't have that to hand then you could use some wire, you could use a hairband that you already have, you could use string, you could even use some paper or card cut into a strip that fits your head, that would absolutely work. So something to be the base of your crown. You'll also need to go out and get foraging. So in my foraging expedition, I picked up lots of acorns that the squirrels had dropped. Now most of them, the squirrels have eaten the, the majority of the acorn, but I was lucky to find a couple of complete ones, which I really love. Acorns are very, very magical and they look lovely on a crown. So. I've got lots and lots of these. I also picked up some bits of fluffy plant that came off of the tree in my front garden that had blown down in the wind. You could use flowers as long as you get permission to pick some. You could use pretend flowers. I also found some skeleton leaves, some dried leaves. This is where you can go and just use your imagination, grab whatever you think is beautiful and that will look lovely on your crown. So you can really get adventurous and creative. You could do tissue paper or some felt. Just see if grown-ups have got anything going spare. Maybe there's some really colourful recycling that's in the recycling bin with lovely colours on it that you could cut up into flower shapes. So see what you fancy that you want to add to your crown. I have also got some really thin green jewellery wire. Now I just had this in my craft box. If you don't have any wire, you could use ribbon or string. This is just to attach things to your crown. Or you could use glue. I didn't want to use glue on mine because I wanted to try and keep it as dry and natural as possible. Um, so, uh, and I had lovely green wire to hand, so that was perfect. So whatever you have that will help you attach things to your crown, just use that. There aren't really any rules with this. I've also added a few vintage jewels to mine that I had in my box. I have a giant box of old broken jewellery, jewellery I don't wear anymore, or vintage beads and buttons and things that I've collected through my life. So I am lucky in that I do have a stash of things like that. But if you've got an old necklace that you don't wear anymore, you can wrap it around your crown just to add a bit of sparkle. So let's get started. First of all, we need to make the base of our crown. Now I roughly tried this against my head just to check that it would fit. I've got this branch from the tree in my garden and it's still quite bendy. It's not completely dried out, it's not too brittle. So I have just wrapped it into a circle and then check that it fits okay. Yeah, that fits fine. And then just twist it about itself. So you shouldn't, if you're using a branch, you shouldn't need to use any glue or anything. You literally just wrap it around itself so that you make an oval or a circle that fits on your head. It doesn't have to be neat, 
In fact, I like it when things stick out. It just adds a little bit more interest. If you're using wire, same thing. Bend it round into a circle and twist it. If you're using an old hairband, hopefully it's already in the shape that you need. And if you're using a strip of paper or card, just measure it against your head and secure it with some glue or sellotape. tape. So now you have the base of your crown. Now this is where it gets a little bit more delicate, slightly more fiddly. I took my wire and I got myself some of my wire cutters and I literally just cut a few little lengths so that I had a little stash to use for attaching my acorns. Now, if you've foraged for natural materials such as acorns, these will be very, very delicate. And you've just got to take extra care. I managed to break quite a few when I was making mine. You just have to be really careful. Wrap a bit of one end of the wire around the acorn so you secured it to the wire. Decide where the front of your crown is going to be. So if I show you mine, I've just focused on the front and I've left the back plain. You could, if you wanted to, go all the way around, but I decided just to focus on the front. So mine's a bit more like a tiara and then it's just plain at the back. So once you've secured your wire to your acorn or whatever it is you're using, with the end of wire that you have left, that's for securing to your crown. So I looked at my crown and I decided where there's a gap, that's quite good to just tuck in your acorn and then with that little tail of wire or string, wrap it round to keep it in place. Give it a pinch, make sure it's quite secure so it's not going to wobble. And that is your first jewel to your crown. So continue in that vein with all of your forage pieces. Once you're happy that you've got enough of your dry forage materials on there, this is where I added my jewels. So just the same principle, find little gaps in the jewellery. Lots of jewellery already has a little loop that it's been attached to its chain, or if it's an earring, often it has a loop to go through your ear. Just find the places that it will be secure to put your wire or your string through, secure it, and then wrap it around your crown. you could leave your crown just like this with all of your leaves and acorns and jewels on there. I decided with this one to go a step further and make it even more shiny. I like shiny things and I just take a dry brush and a bit of gold paint and just really really roughly dry brush the gold all over your crown. Now this allows the beautiful natural wood and browns to shine through but it just gives it that extra glint for your mayday sparkle. Also dry brush over your jewels so it keeps everything uniform but don't paint them solidly you want to still see the colours that they are shining through so that they show you all sorts of beautiful jewel colours but just that glint of gold really lifts it and makes it look extra regal.
once you've covered it with gold as much as you like or whatever colour you have chosen, let it dry. As soon as it's dry, it is ready for the crowning ceremony and you can wear it for your May Day spring celebrations or maybe just to cheer yourself up on a particularly gloomy isolation day. Thank you for joining me with this lovely natural craft. I've really enjoyed working with materials from my garden and from the woods. It just makes it feel extra magical and obviously a little bit of gold, dry brush gold, everything I make tends to have gold on it and some lovely jewels really, really cheers it up. And I don't know about you, but it's making me feel extra special today. We've had a lot of storms and things, so it's nice to have this beautiful crown on just to remind me that summer's coming, better things are coming. Even though it might not feel like it right now, there is definitely a brighter time coming after all this is over. So thanks for joining me. Please do like, share, subscribe, all of those things that you do. Tag us in your creations, even if it's something that you've just done a lovely doodle of and you just want to share it with us, please do. And we might add you in our stories so we can share your amazing artwork with everybody else. And take care, stay safe. We look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.